brilliant. So why is it difficult, uh, which is the core theme of the book, I presume, on spontaneous communication, right? Which is really what I think you're talking about. Uh, so what makes it difficult for people to have spontaneous communication? There are several things that get in the way. A lot of them have to do with our mindset and how we approach it. So first off, there are many people who just say, that's not who I am. I am not somebody who can communicate well in the moment. So we get in our own way by saying, it's just not me. You're either born with it or you're not. And I'm here to say that that is not true. You can absolutely learn to be a, a good spontaneous communicator. Another thing that gets in the way is anxiety, our fear of speaking in front of others, our fear of not doing it right, our fear of making mistakes. All of that can get in the way. Additionally, it has to do with the, the ways in which we judge our communication. You know, when you ask people, give me an example of a good communicator. Most people will identify people who are essentially professional speakers. They'll refer to a TED, somebody who spoke at TED. They'll talk about uh, leaders of organizations, uh, political leaders. These are all people who are trained who spend extensive hours practicing. And so when we hold that up as our comparison, it's really hard to live up to that. And that can also discourage people and make them nervous. The reality is those people have spent a lot of time training. And in many cases, their, their speeches are edited or written for them by other people. So comparing ourselves to that standard when we're speaking in the moment only makes people more intimidated. So there's several factors that get in the way. And I'm here to tell you that we can put all of those aside. We can manage our anxiety. We can find appropriate role models and we can realize that we can learn these skills.